Hey, Walt here from StogieReview.com with another video cigar review. As you can see, we are in the car again, and uh, I guess it's the, the commute with Walt hour. You'll have to uh, excuse me. It's been a tremendously long day. Um, my birthday was last night, and or my birthday was yesterday. We had a party last night, and uh, we didn't get cleaned up and things like that until a little after 10 o'clock, the last people left. Uh, my daughter woke up at about 3.36 this morning, and I remember precisely it being 3.36 because after I put her back to bed, I walked back into my bedroom, I glanced at my alarm clock, and I remember thinking I've got like 24 minutes before my alarm goes off. I wonder how much sleep I can cram into that little time frame. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get back to sleep, and uh, it's I've, I've worked almost a 12-hour work day. Uh, I went from work over to the old house to gather some stuff up that I'm going to try to unload on some yard sale sites uh, to try to get this house cleaned out. And uh, it's just been a really, really long day. That's why I'm all kind of filthy, and my, you know, my car is just a mess anyway. But. Uh, so I, I finished up what I had to do at the house. I climbed in the car, I pulled the camera out, and I thought I would uh, light up a cigar and just kind of enjoy an hour ride home, or what I would imagine is going to be fairly close to an hour. So the cigar that I'm smoking is the uh, Viva Republica Rapture, which is uh, made by La Aurora. And this is a cigar that I think has uh, Pennsylvania roots. As I understand it, there, this was a house blend or a, just a, a small boutique blend for a shop here in Pennsylvania. And over time, the, the popularity of the brand swelled. And um, from there, it became too much for the, the owners to handle. So they handed over distribution to Miami Cigar. And now, anytime you go to a Miami event, you'll be seeing uh, Viva Republica stuff being pushed. Now. I picked up one of these, actually I picked up two of them at uh, the Miami Cigar event I went to the other week where I, where I picked up the, uh, the Nesta Miranda Chapter 2. So I get there and I, I bring my own cigar because I was planning on sitting down and talking to the rep and things before I, I went into the humidor and bought my own stuff. So I walked in smoking an old La Rara Preferito. I sat down with the rep, I sat down with the owner of the store, and we, we kind of talked and got caught up a little bit. And uh, every once in a while, you see customers go into the walk-in humidor, pick some stuff up, and then come back out. And, you know, there's almost like these, these little whispers. Is this the right cigar? Is this the one you were talking about? Is this the one I have to try? And all of them were talking about the Rapture. Uh, you know, and it was the craziest thing. Guys were coming out, you know, having bought one or two of them. They'd go into the private lounge, or they'd hang out around the shop, they'd smoke the cigar, and then they'd wind up going back in for seconds and thirds and fourths. And I really hadn't had a whole lot of exposure to the brand, but with people going in and out of there like there was some sort of drug deal, it was just the, the strangest thing seeing guys just kind of just become hit, hooked on this cigar so fast that uh, I made it a point to grab two while I was there. I smoked one, I think, that evening, and then I picked one up later on so that I can sort of round this out. I think I've had, I think this is either cigar number four or number five. Uh, they're a little pricey at about $9 a stick, and as I understand it, they come in natural and Maduro, but don't quote me on that. I remember seeing two boxes on the shelf, a light one and a dark one, and I grabbed the dark one because I tend to gravitate towards Maduros. So that's where we are. That's your little backstory and all the other stuff you really didn't need to know for the purpose of this review. But uh, just give me a second to let me get uh, kind of situated. I'll come back and we'll start talking about how the cigar is going and things like that. All right, I think I've got things as situated as I'm going to in a moving car. The air conditioner is starting to work. Start, things are starting to cool down a little bit. Maybe I'll stop sweating all over myself. But um, so uh, the Viva Republica Rapture. So I picked up the cigar for about nine bucks at the local Miami cigar event, and uh, I've got to be honest, the, my first impressions weren't really good. Um, just kind of looking it over, the wrapper is kind of rough and lumpy and rugged looking. You probably can't see this because I'm driving through shade and I can't see the viewfinder anyway. But, uh, you know, the wrapper is just really rough looking. It's got big veins, it's just kind of lumpy and just kind of ugly. The, the cellophane that they use 
it's almost like it's one size fits all. So it's like way big on the on the cigar. It's like the next size up. So it practically falls out. Not that that that's probably a good thing, but uh, you know, just the, it's the little touches that that it's the little quirks that. Uh, to get my brain going, like, you know, why did they do that? That, that sort of thing. Um, the caps are kind of rough on these two. I've had a couple that started to unravel on me a little. It could be the fact that I'm using a single blade guillotine recently. It's, you know, just this little slimline thing that fits in my pocket. I don't have to lug around, you know, a big, heavy Zycar or a polio cutter. Um, so, you know, that could be part of the issue that I'm running into, but uh, I'm definitely getting some caps that are that are coming apart. And it, it makes smoking a cigar a little bit more difficult. Um, in terms of smokeability, the draw on these things have been awesome. And, you know, they're nice and loose. The smoke volume is good to start. Now, we'll see where this one goes because I've had some some inconsistencies in the line in the, in the last handful that I smoked. And I'm not quite sure... You know, I'm just not quite sure about the consistency at this point. The body is medium. Uh, it, it's it's got this dark, earthy, ground-up coffee sort of taste, and. Uh, in the flavor, and that's kind of the, the, the big selling point for me here. I really enjoy this this flavor. It's got a little bit of a bitterness to it. It's a little bitey. It's got a little pepper through the sinus. It uh, it's kind of rough around the edges. It's it tastes as rugged as the cigar looks. So it just it kind of has that uh, I don't know that rugged kind of vibe going going for it, and. Uh, it works really well with the flavor and the body being medium. The finish is, I, I want to say it's its slightly drying. You know, it's its not creamy. It doesn't have that buttery smooth sort of texture on the palate. So it's a little, it's a little dry. Uh, it, this is something that makes me want to reach for something, usually coffee. Uh, you know, I've got a bottle of water sitting next to me. I'll definitely be sipping on it as I smoke along. But so far we're off to a pretty good start. It's not you know, the best looking cigar, uh, but it's smoking fairly well. And I think that's going to about do it for this, this first portion. So now I can turn the radio on, uh, sing like an idiot to myself as I'm driving on the road, and <laughs> then we'll, we'll flip the camera on as I get a little bit closer. I'll probably wind up in my driveway again because this is a fairly substantial cigar, and uh, traffic really seems to be moving today. I'm, I'm getting out of work a little bit later than usual, several hours later than usual. So, uh, so far we're off to a pretty good commute. Well, we're smoking along on our Viva Republica Rapture, and uh, I was originally going to turn the, the camera on and just kind of talk a little bit just to fill the, to fill the time, but um, I turned the radio off, and then I had to touch up the cigar, and next thing you know, I'm cursing at the cigar, and I'm just getting aggravated, so I thought, what the hell, we'll cover, you know, we'll do kill two birds with one stone, we'll talk about the cigar a little bit, then we'll sort of run off and just do a a couple of minutes on whatever comes to mind. So, uh, what, what's so annoying about this cigar? It seems like the same exact thing happens with every single one that I smoke. You light it up and it smokes beautiful for a good half inch to an inch. And then after that, it burns like shit. Uh, it won't stay lit. It's like the old, uh, the old PDR Oscuros or whatever they were. The ones that had like the, the, uh, like a flame retardant wrapper, you, you had to get the, the lighter out and constantly touch them up. This is very much the same way. Um, I've got a little bit of tunneling going on in the foot. That seems pretty common too. So the smoke volume really tapers off. Uh, they're, they're hard to keep lit. And it's, it's just a struggle, an intermittent struggle. It just kind of goes on and on for for quite a while in the cigar before it levels out again. So it's I'm, I'm kind of getting agitated since I have to keep grabbing the lighter just to keep things burning and going. This cigar is definitely not conducive to driving since I have to keep reaching for the lighter and touching it up going down the road. But. Uh, 
So there's my annoyance on the cigar. The, 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 the uh, just the, the burn annoys me. So um, the other thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was uh, what I've got going on. The reason I'm all dirty and stuff. Uh, back when I originally bought my house, or right shortly afterwards or something like that, I had a friend of mine who had a friend who was moving. And uh, the guy that was moving was an old, I shouldn't say, he was the son of a farmer. So he had the same sort of... Uh, the same sort of background, you know, you get a barn, you fill it full of stuff, and uh, this, this friend of ours had uh, an old drill press and an old benchtop planer. Now, a friend of mine was just getting into his own, was just starting his own business as a contractor, and he had already had this stuff. He didn't need doubles, so uh, he asked me if I wanted to take this stuff off his hands. The drill press, you know, needs a lot of tender love and care. It needs to be cleaned up. It needs a new switch. Other than that, I think it runs, it's supposed to run pretty well. I've never bothered to clean it up and whatnot. I just kind of stuck it in the corner of my basement. The planer, I think it's like, a, it's a four inch model. Uh, it had an external motor. It needs a motor. Everything else is there. It also needs some cleaning up. But again, I took this thing and I kind of stuck it in the back of my basement. And, then, and the plan was that I, when I started my own wood shop in the basement, you know, to tool around and do things around the house, that I would have these tools and not have to go out and buy them. The, the benchtop planer is in much better shape than the drill press, but I never got around to getting a motor or cleaning it up. And it, I just kind of wrapped it in plastic and stuck it in the corner of the basement. The drill press, on the other hand, that thing must weigh 120 pounds. It's a benchtop model. It's old. It's built like a tank. I would expect it to run beautifully once it's all cleaned up and stuff. So I had to drag that stuff out of the corner of my basement. Of course, it's you know buried behind other stuff that we were shifting around when we were moving. So I had to drag this stuff outside, get pictures of it. I'm going to post it on a Facebook yard sale site. Maybe I'll stick it on Craigslist. I really hate doing that with things that I don't know the value of. These things were given to me for free, so I don't, I don't remember. I really don't think I paid anything for them. I don't know what it's worth. And I hate just throwing a number out there, so I'm going to do the one thing I absolutely hate, and I'm just going to say, just make me an offer if it's, you know, if it tickles my fancy, you can come have, it, you know, come get it, and that sort of thing. So uh, that's why I'm like covered in grease from the neck down, which you really can't see, but uh, yeah, the drill press had some grease and stuff on it that apparently never got cleaned up when I originally wrapped it in plastic, but. Uh, it is what it is. I also got some cigar ashtrays that I've been collecting for years that I want to try to get rid of. Um, I'm not going to do a smoking lounge in the new house. Despite, you know, everything, all of my grand ideas, I thought I was going to put a uh, smoking lounge in the basement and, you know, do an air filtration system and things like that. But after we moved out, all the just the gunk that I cleaned up off the stuff in my office, it just really turned me off to smoking in the house. And the, the crazy thing is, is, you know, I would go through the office and wipe it down once a week, you know, clean out the ashtrays, that sort of thing. And it really, the smell never hit me until I started taking things out. You know, I'd wipe down my leather chair and things periodically. But, you know, I got that thing outside and you just get wailed in the face with this cigar odor. Once the stuff gets out in the sun, the wind starts blowing around. So, you know, I'm scrubbing it with disinfectant and I got it all cleaned up and it looks great. But uh, I don't know that I ever want to go through that again. It's just, uh, it's incredible how much of a mess cigars make in a, in a small space. You know, when you're working out of a home office, it you know, doesn't have a lot of big square footage or a big filtration system that can keep up. In my case, it was just an exhaust fan. Uh, it was just a high-rated bathroom exhaust fan to pull, to pull out the old smoke and you know, dump it outside. So... I don't think I'm going to be doing that in the new house. So as a result, I got all this miscellaneous stuff that I've been collecting over the years that I that I try, need to try to get rid of. Uh, you know, like old like uh, Romeo Julieta ashtrays, uh, Nat Sherman ashtrays. I've got an old floor stand ashtray that came out of uh, Kensington Tobacconist. I'm really hesitant to get rid of that. If anything, I might just uh, repaint it, hit it with some like enamel paint that'll hold up outside, and sit it on my porch or something. I'm not I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. But it's got some uh, some fond memories associated with it, so I don't know that I want to part with it. Uh, the other stuff I've just been collecting it, you know, from various you know cigar events and orders and things like that. I, I really don't care about it. I'll probably just list them for like ten bucks a piece and then just try to unload as many as I can. I've got a lawn tractor to buy. Uh, with the, the the size of the yard that I have now, it's uh, it's definitely not something I want to try to tackle with a push mower. It'll take hours. So I need to put some money together and, and get myself. Uh, <laughs> a riding mower. 
then I can actually smoke cigars while I mow the lawn instead of like before pushing up, push mower up a hill. But uh, I'm a little bit closer to home, so I'm gonna turn the camera off, try to light this cigar probably again. It's my fault this time. I wasn't puffing on it, but uh, we'll probably come back maybe once more before I get home, and then. Uh, I don't know, maybe once through my driveway or something. I'm not quite sure yet, so hang tight. This thing is a damn nightmare. So I turn the camera off, I turn the radio on, I grab the lighter, I touch it up, and as soon as I gotta, you know, pull the cigar away from my face, the, the, the cap pops off, just like all the others. It's just one thing after another. Um, I don't think I'm going to get agitated enough to throw this out the window, only because of how expensive they are at $9. But I don't know. It, it's just amazing that Lorara makes this, and yet it's just... I don't want to say that they're cutting corners with it, but just the quality is kind of shitty for a $9 cigar. I mean... I can I, I can get behind the cigar looking rugged. You know I get it. It's you know it's part of the, the character of the cigar. I can appreciate you know sort of rough flavors and having a flavor profile that matches the the look and appeal of the cigar. But one thing that just aggravates the hell out of me is you know subpar construction when caps pop off and draws fall apart and you, you smoke volume dips and you get tunneling. It's just, it's unacceptable for a $9 cigar. It's unacceptable for a $5 cigar or $4 cigar. You know, there's just no reason why we should be paying such premiums for cigars that don't behave properly or aren't constructed properly. Um, I, I, I don't know, maybe I just have horrible luck with these because I know there were a lot of guys going in and out of that humidor buying these cigars. I don't know how many boxes he went through during that event, but I know that one of his best sellers was this Rapture. And for the life of me, I, I really I can't understand why. It tastes great. You know, it's got some coffee flavors. It's got these just rich, earthy, deep, dark flavor profile that just works. It's got a little pepperiness. It's got some spice. It's It's got some punch through the sinus. It's got the character of having, you know, this, this rough around the edges sort of feel to it. But it... You, you have to have the, the total package. You can't have a cigar that tastes really good but burns like shit or or just the cap falls off. You know, that's just one of those things where you, I just I can't get over it. Uh, regardless of the price point of the cigar, you know, I can, I can put up with certain things when I'm smoking budget cigars, but this is by no stretch a budget cigar. So... I think that's that's going to conclude my rant for uh, for this portion. I'm getting pretty close to home. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. Probably come back one more time and wrap it up. Uh, it'll probably be from my yard or sitting in my driveway or something. I don't know. I, I think I need to pick shorter commute cigars, especially when we're driving this this later on in the evening or in the afternoon. I don't know. It's it's 6:30. I guess it's after rush hour technically, so uh, the drive's going a bit smoother. That's where we're at. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm home. I'm sitting in my yard. I'm calmed down, and now I'm, I'm finishing up my uh, Rapture from Viva Republic. I've got quite a bit of cigar left, but uh, I thought it was worthwhile coming back and wrapping it up um, before I start getting to doing some stuff around the yard and stuff. But, um, you know, I, I really can get behind the flavor of the cigar. I like it. It's, it's got those uh, dark rich coffee tones, uh, you know, some woody flavor, some pepper. It's got uh, some zing through the sinus, you know, it really lets you know it's there. It's got uh, just rough around the edges. It's got character. It's it's really good in the flavor department. I, I, can, I can definitely get behind the cigar there. Uh, it being a little drying on the palate isn't ideal, but I, I can get behind it. You know, it, it kind of works with what's going on. Uh, where I really struggle to enjoy the cigars in the construction department. I mean, I, you have to baby it. Um, I've had the ash drop off a couple of times unexpectedly. I'm getting little tunnels in there. You can see, even here, you know, it just doesn't burn very well. You know, there's just issues going on. The smoke volume deteriorates. Uh, it's it gets difficult to uh, to get good solid flavor out of it to ro to rotate this uh, to retrohale the smoke. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's kind of one thing after another in the construction department, and I feel like I, I, 
I have to be really gentle in how I smoke it because if I just pull the cigar away, you know, the cap pulls off like a party streamer and, you know, just the tiniest little bit gets stuck to your lip and the whole thing just comes apart. So you have to take a puff and gently kind of push back on the cap to, to push it back down over top or you constantly have to lick it and, and roll the, the leaf over so that it doesn't come back off. It's just, uh, you know, this, these are things that you shouldn't have to deal with with a $9 cigar. You know, they're, the cigars for far less money perform better. In, in, in that regard. Uh, I really like the flavor I can get behind it. This is definitely something that I think would go really well with a nice dark roasted coffee or uh, something like a Samuel Smith's Oatmeal Stout or a Lancaster Brewing Company Milk Stout. Uh, maybe even Guinness even though that's kind of light. But you know any any kind of dark beer that you know those nice stout flavors go would go really well with the cigar. I think uh, or Founders Breakfast that would be awesome with this. It's been forever since I've had that. But, uh, you know, just those deep, dark flavors, I think, would go really, really well with the cigar. Uh, and if you're not a beer drinker, you know, again, you know, nice dark roast coffee would, would do wonders as well. So, you know, I, I'm kind of torn. I, I like the flavor. I could definitely smoke more of them, but I just, I'm not willing to shell out nine bucks for a cigar that I've got a baby. It's just not worth it to me.